Um, okay, let me write down a few things for you so that you have something to put your head on. Oh, one more thing before I write a few things. It turns out that the center of our galaxy, the location of the nuclear bulge, when you look at the night sky, uh, the center of the galaxy is in the direction of constellation Sagittarius. So when your uh, time of the year, when you see Sagittarius, you can't see Sagittarius uh, any time of the year, and we'll talk about that in, in more detail, but uh, uh, when you see it and you look in the direction of the Sagittarius, you are looking towards the center of our galaxy. And uh, many of you heard about doomsday predictions uh, for 2012, right? When, according to the Mayan calendar, the world is supposed to end and all kinds of bad things are going to happen. And we are in May of 2013 and we are still around, right? We are alive. One of uh, the doomsday predictions was that on the day of the winter solstice, the Earth, the Sun, and the center of the galaxy are aligned. They are all along the same line. Well, that happens on winter solstice, around December 22nd, every year. For the few uh, thousand years, it will not always be like that. But there was nothing special about 2012 in terms of the Earth, the Sun at the time of the uh, so, uh, 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 winter solstice, and the center of the galaxy aligning. That happens around summer solstice, December 22nd, just before Christmas, every year. Okay. So just telling you that uh, in the case you are reading about these things, there is an excellent article in National Geographic that I'll probably link to the course webpage that debunks all these different uh, doomsday scenario for 2012. So taking the course in science, I hope you will learn uh, to read very carefully what um, is published on the web or in the papers, so on and so forth. Do not accept anything that does not make sense to, uh, to you based on what you know. Okay, uh, so let's switch the mode once again. Uh, it has diameter of about 100,000 light years and the sun's distance from the center of the galaxy is about, we'll round it to 30,000 light years. And it contains, it's estimated based on the density of stars in our neighborhood of uh, 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 the galaxy that it contains about 100 billion stars. You have to realize that basically we live in the disk of the galaxy, and the disk contains not only stars, but lots of so-called interstellar material, gas and dust, which blocks our view. When you look in the plane of the galaxy, that gas and dust blocks the view, so we cannot really see what is on the other side of the galaxy. So we can estimate the number of stars in the Milky Way by counting the number of stars at a certain distance from us in our neighborhood and then assuming more or less uniform distribution uh, in the plane of the disk, we can estimate that the entire disk contains this many stars. So it's not an absolute number, it's just an estimate of how many stars it contains. Now, it turns out that the stars revolve around the Milky Way. And it takes Sun 230 million years to complete one full revolution around the center of the galaxy. 
that's an awful long period of time, 230 million years. Just to put it in some perspective, many of you have heard that a great number of species on Earth was destroyed when a large object, probably an asteroid or maybe even a comet, uh, hit uh, the Earth 65 million years ago in around Yucatan uh, Peninsula in the place called Chicxulub. The impact uh, threw a lot of dust in the air that actually blocked the sunlight. So the plants died because they could not produce uh, 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 their material through photosynthesis. There was no sun. All the animals that uh, fed on these uh, plants didn't have any food. They died away. Uh, also, the very harsh conditions were created where uh, there was uh, acid rain falling down, destroying everything on the surface. And only small mammals living in burrows underneath the ground and covered in fur could actually survive. And eventually, we evolved from them. Right? So evolution in nature is a slow, steady process. But every now and then, there is a catastrophic event, just like that one which occurred 65 million years ago, that channels the evolution in a particular direction. Right? And because of that catastrophic accident, the way things developed after that, we uh, came on top. If it didn't happen, uh, who knows how things would look uh, 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 right now. Right? So that event happened 65 million years ago. So if it takes 230 million years for the sun to revolve once around the galactic center, in the period of time of 65 million years, it made just about a quarter of the trip around the galaxy. Right? Now, let me ask you uh, one question. We know now, and uh, we know that from several different independent uh, uh, pieces of evidence that the sun and the solar system around it, uh, or planets around it, uh, was uh, created uh, 4.6 billion years ago. So how many round trips the sun made around the galaxy during its lifetime? If it takes 230 million years to make one complete trip. Right? So, so 4.6 billion, that's the same thing as 4.6 times 10 to the 6 years ago. It turns out that it has enough fuel to live an additional 4.6 billion years. Roughly, right now we are a midpoint of its life. Uh, once it runs out of fuel, it will basically uh, 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 swell up into a red giant, uh, swallowing perhaps Earth in the process. As it expands, it cools, it changes the color from yellow-white to red. Eventually, those top layers will be blown out, uh, forming so-called planetary nebula, and what is left behind is dead, non-energy producing uh, core uh, that is extremely hot, size roughly the diameter of the Earth, but much higher surface temperature that is called a white dwarf. We'll talk more about uh, those classifications later on. Okay, so uh, the sun has existed for 4.6 billion years. It will live for as long for another uh, 4.6 billion years, and then it's the end. So the question is, how many times did the sun revolve around the galactic center during this uh, past if it takes 230 
million years to make one complete revolution. So I have to divide its uh, age, which is 4.6 billion years, with the time it takes one complete revolution, which is 213 million years, or 2.3 times uh, uh, 230 million is 2.3 times 10 to the 5 years. Per revolution. So 4.6 over 2.3 is 2. 10 to the 6 times 10 to the 5 gives me 10. So I have 2 times 10. It's 20 revolutions. So during its lifetime, the sun completed 20 full revolutions around the galactic center. Sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah, 9. And here I have 200, this is 8, right? Thank you very much. So 4.6 times 10 to the 9 over 2.3 times 10 to the 8, right? It still works out to 20. So once again, 4.6 times 10 to the 9 years over 2.3 times 10 to the 8 years per revolution. Uh, 10 to the 9 over 10 to the 8 gives me 10. And then I have 4.6 uh, uh, over 2.3 is 2 times 10. I get 20 revolutions. Right? Thanks. <laughs>